Let's drop the reveal. Roll it. So here it is. Come on. Boom. <laughs> You are getting a brand what? new oh. mode. Later this year, we will launch Group Iron Man what? for RuneScape. This is going to be about you gathering your friends, starting your group, and re-experiencing RuneScape with only your blood, sweat, and tears to get you through. Let's go. We are so excited to deliver this long-requested game mode oh 10 God. years after the release of the original Iron Man in RuneScape. <laughs> RuneScape is so back, and I'm just so incredibly excited about today. Uh, so earlier today, the RuneScape channel went live on Twitch and they did a two hour long stream where they first revealed the roadmap for the remainder of the 2024 year. And they follow that up by also chatting with the developers. So there's a lot of information that isn't in the roadmap or in the news post uh, that they talked about on stream. And I have compiled all of it. So today we're going to be going over the roadmap. And I'm just so excited because this is the stuff that we've been asking for for years and we've been wanting for years. And I think to me, this shows a massive shift in how they're approaching making content for RuneScape. So I'm just so incredibly excited. Uh, let's get right into it. Going through the news post, there's a lot of really cool, interesting things. I'm going to be talking about everything on here, but the first thing I wanted to talk about, which I think is the most interesting thing by far, is right at the very, very bottom. Uh, which is a final word from Mod Marcos. Hey everyone, I'm Mod Marcos. For the last couple of years, I've been an executive producer for old school RuneScape, and I've recently also begun working on RuneScape 2. This roadmap is the result of months of hard work from RuneScape's team to really set a clear path forward, putting the pieces in place to develop content in a way that involves players while ensuring we release meaningful updates every single month. I hope this comes through in what we've shown you today. I've worked for Jagex for many years and actually started out on the RuneScape team. I want to see RuneScape thriving for many years to come. I'm ambitious for the game in the same way I was when I started working on Old School, but I realize that delivery is much more important than saying the right thing. It's down to myself and the team to get back into the groove of consistently delivering excellent content. So I'm just gonna quickly pause there. Uh, this is awesome to hear. Uh, and for years and years and years, uh, I've definitely been saying this, and I know a lot of others have. Uh, it's hard sometimes playing RuneScape and then looking over at some of the things that Old School has and the approach to content on that game. A lot of the time, it just feels a little more player focused and a little, to put it simply, better. So the fact that we are now going to, it looks like, be sharing an executive producer with Old School, for a RuneScape 3 player, this is absolutely fantastic. Because for years and years and years, we've been saying, man, why can Old School get this, but RuneScape 3 can't? And it looks like the end of that might be nigh. They also want to let you know that there is a Discord stage happening on Friday of this week. Uh, I will also be streaming that Discord stage on Twitch, so if you're someone that doesn't like Discord for whatever reason, uh, you can do it there, and I was given permission to do that. Um, and outside of that, they say thank you for the incredible support. I'm looking forward to the stories you'll tell with this content and to meet many of you in person at RuneFest later this year. And then, really taking from old school here a little bit, the sign-off actually includes all of the mods that worked on the roadmap. And this is something that if you're an old school player, you've been seeing this on old school forever. On RuneScape 3, this is, this is new. This is different. This is a nice touch. Um, but now, with that said and that message out of the way, uh, let's get into the actual roadmap stuff. The first thing on the roadmap that is not in the game yet is a brand new Rex Matriarch. And this is going to be a necromancy type matriarch that is being worked on primarily right now by Mod Ramen. And Mod Ramen wanted to confirm that it's sort of like a regular Rex Matriarch in terms of difficulty, but possibly a little bit harder. He mentioned that if you're going to be going into the boss with top tier gear, you're going to have no problem face rolling the boss, but he also mentioned that it might have a couple more mechanics than the regular Rex Matriarchs. In addition to this and coming out with this update, there's also going to be a short quest with requirements right around the level of 70 necromancy and 30 to 40 archaeology in order to access this boss. The last interesting thing he said about this Rex Matriarch is that there are actually going to be four separate boss pets coming out with this update. So I have no idea how they're going to do that, but there are going to be four new pets coming into the game later on this month. After the new boss, we're going to have a brand new archaeology dig site that is set in Damonheim. And initially, I wasn't super interested in this, but it's going to be two brand new locations with artifacts and mysteries, and it's also going to feature a brand new archaeology relic. But beyond that, and possibly more interesting to people that aren't massive archaeology enjoyers, is along with this, Mod Blackwitch and the rest of the art team have actually done a complete overhaul of Damonheim as well. So the entire surface world of Damonheim is going to be getting massive improvements. Outside of that, we're going to have the return of the Summer Beach event as well as a Pride event. And then heading into the next massive content piece, later on in the summer, we have a new boss dungeon that is called the Sanctum of Rebirth. And this looks a little bit similar to the final boss room of the Tomes of a Masket in Old School RuneScape. And it doesn't just look similar in terms of the appearance. Instead of a regular elite dungeon where you've got a mix of bosses and trash mobs, this has been described as a boss rush. So it's effectively three bosses back to back to back, and that would be the entirety of the dungeon. 
and you'd presumably be getting loot throughout the entire dungeon that you'd claim at the very end. So this is going to be three new bosses coming out at the same time with two different difficulty modes. You'll be able to fight them in groups of one to four players in normal mode or in hard mode. And when you're looking at the specifics of this boss encounter, it's really interesting. It takes place in the underworld, and it was confirmed that this will be the source of tier 95 dual wield magic weapons. ModSponge also mentioned that they don't have an effect figured out for these tier 95s, but what they want to do if they have time is do an actual combat beta with five or six different versions of a set effect or a passive or a special attack for these weapons so that the community gets a chance to actually try out all the different versions and possibly even vote on which one they would prefer. But that's not all. He also alluded to the idea that there is some other kind of interesting reward that he's extremely excited about. And what he said about it specifically is that it might be something that may be able to take weapons beyond tier 95. I have no idea how that works, how that could be implemented, or what that looks like, but this place is going to be the source of some absolutely massive rewards. From a difficulty standpoint, they usually don't say too much, but he did say these bosses are going to be less complicated or less difficult than something like Zamorak, but they are going to be real bosses, and he used the Crassian Leviathan, which is the first boss of Elite Dungeon 3, as an example of a boss that would be less complicated than any of these bosses in the Sanctum of Reaper. Along with that in the summer, we've also got an update to mining and smithing, and it's also really well tied in to this archaeology dig site because it's going to involve dungeoneering resources and being able to make them in the live game. It was also confirmed that this is going to involve being able to craft some kind of masterwork weapon, as well as a new set of armor. And then last but not least, rounding out the summer, we've got a new set of area tasks for the city of Um, because when Necromancy came out, there were only easy and medium tasks. So I presume there are going to be hard and elite tasks coming out. And along with that as well, there is going to be a new Necromancy ability, which would be your fourth conjurer. Since Necromancy came out, the ability to add four conjures at once is unlocked at level 106, but there wasn't actually a way to use it because there weren't four conjures. So it looks like towards the end of the summer, that's going to be changing. And then we get into the beginning of the autumn, where we've got a brand new skilling boss. And when the mods sat down and talked about it, they mentioned many times learning from Croesus in particular with regard to skilling bosses. The most interesting that they said, in my opinion, is that Croesus is the second most popular or the second most killed boss in the entire game, which is something I had no idea about and is proof that I am absolutely living in a bubble. There are two big differences with this new skilling boss. The first one is that any skilling nodes that are involved are going to be different from the ones in Croesus, so don't expect there to be any woodcutting, mining, fishing, or hunter involved in this boss encounter. And the one other thing that is really important to note is unlike Acrosis, this is going to have a solo mode or the ability to feasibly solo it, which I think for a lot of players is going to be pretty exciting. Following that up in August, we've got a new story quest as well as a new Slayer monster that's going to provide a necromancy upgrade to the Slayer Helmet, which is something that doesn't exist yet, but everyone knew that at some point it was going to be coming out. And when it does, for a number of PVM encounters where necromancy is already pretty good, it's going to be even better to be using necromancy on a task. But then we get into the end of autumn, and this is the thing that I'm super excited about. This is the thing that has had me absolutely beaming for the past six hours in autumn. RuneScape 3 is going to be getting group Iron Man mode. And this is just absolutely insane to me for so many reasons. This is a perfect example of something that old schools had that I've been looking at and thinking, man, if only I had this. The possibilities are endless. It's such a fun way to get back into the game or get into the game with new friends or new individuals and just re-experience RuneScape in a brand new game mode. And the fact that it's group Iron Man mode as well as a content creator, I am just so excited. I cannot wait for that release date. And honestly, if I could fast forward it and skip all the other stuff and just get right to this, I would absolutely do that because this is just going to be an absolute game changer in my opinion. The other thing I want to say about Group Iron Man mode that is super exciting to me in particular is in years past, I've been asked if I thought we would ever get something like Group Iron Man mode or even another kind of permanent game mode. And in the past, I've always said I would love it, but I don't really see it happening in the current climate. And the reason for that or the primary reason for that is microtransactions are notoriously or not notoriously disabled in a lot of the Iron Man modes. And my current thinking back in the day or a few years ago or even as recently as a few months ago is I don't know if they would really be able to put out a massive update like this and a permanent game mode uh, that didn't have microtransactions in it in that kind or didn't have access to Treasure Hunter. And it turns out uh, I was completely wrong. And that's what's really blowing me away about this is even in the news post, they specifically outline what it means to be an Iron Man and they specifically list no Treasure Hunter, which means I'm not expecting anything crazy to creep up on us where this comes out and there's actually like a secret Treasure Hunter involved. 
They're actually just giving us group Iron Man mode as a permanent game mode, and the possibilities with this are absolutely endless. Even as a solo player, being able to play Iron Man mode where you have one account that does all the prep and all the supplying, and then your other account that does all the PVMing, or what I'm gonna be doing, which is gonna be gearing up with a bunch of creators and friends and just making some absolutely awesome content. I just could not be more excited. And this is the kind of thing that really does a lot of goodwill for the players and for creators alike, where I see that they're making this and I think, Man, I'm excited for RuneScape 3. They are clearly not in maintenance mode and they're trying to make some absolutely fantastic content. That's definitely the bombshell from today's roadmap. Uh, the fact that all of this is coming out in the next six months as well is pretty incredible. And we're not even done yet because towards the very end of the year throughout the winter, uh, there's also gonna be a new story quest and that is an image of Bilrak. So it seems like that is gonna be a continuation of the Rec Room for a Dragon quest and that sort of Zao talk looking storyline with Moya. And um, then after that, of course, we will have the Christmas Village, and Mod Ramen did confirm that the Black Party Hat will be back as a part of it again. It's basically going to be almost identical to what it was last year. Uh, one other scaling update that I completely brushed over is they also want to do an update on fletching and woodcutting in autumn, but they didn't really give any details on it. Uh, they were extremely vague, possibly intentionally, about the scaling updates in particular, without giving us too much. So yeah, that's the roadmap, and I am just so incredibly excited. This is easily the most excited I've been for any period of time in RuneScape in literal years, and to me, this really truly does feel like the dawn of a new era. You don't have to agree with me on that, and that's totally okay, and I also very much understand the people who are being a little skeptical, as in, I will believe it when I see it, and I'm very much in the same boat. I'm giving this roadmap a 9 out of 10, but of course, it is going to depend on the quality of these updates, and if they can actually happen month after month after month. But the idea they've got in the framework here looks absolutely fantastic. And I am so incredibly excited. And I'm so glad that I stayed on RuneScape 3 as well. One other really important thing that is in this news post that I have linked in the description down below is there's a creator survey and it is extremely long. I completed it on my stream and it probably took me about two hours to go through it. They strongly recommended that people complete this if they want their voice heard. There were a ton of awesome questions about features and bosses and quests and accessibility and what people like and what people don't. So if you want to get your voice heard, uh, this is a really, really good way to do it. And I will link this entire news post in the description down below. In addition to this, if you want some company while you complete the longest survey in human history, I completed it on my stream and I wanted to let people know that we have a brand new VOD channel. So if you want to check it out, I've linked that in the description down below. But basically at the end of all of my Twitch streams, I will be exporting that Twitch VOD over to YouTube so that people that don't like Twitch or don't want to go onto Twitch to watch a VOD uh, have a chance to see it here too. So if that's of any interest to you, I've linked it in the description down below. Uh, outside of that though, I'm just so incredibly excited. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so happy to be playing RuneScape and I cannot wait to see these updates starting to drop. Uh, with that said, I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously, this is going to be a very pivotal moment in RuneScape history. So I'm sure there are going to be all kinds of opinions from positive to negative to everything in between. And I'd love to hear from you. So make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about this roadmap. And with that said, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again very soon for another video.